All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you a fantastic video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War, and in today's video, we are talking about the newly balanced war chariots combined with black serpents, pew pew in the face. We will be taking a look at the war chariots rebalancing, talking about the good things about the rebalance, the bad things about the rebalance, a PvP report, and a PvE report of a level 43 black serpent against a 300 power tile. All of it's very, very interesting. So get excited, like, and sub, and let's rock and roll. Yes. Oh. Okay, so first up, let's take a real quick look at the War Chariots. Let's talk about the couple changes that has happened to them in the last few patches, okay? The War Chariots have always had a hidden large unit attribute. Um, it has affected a few things in the stats, but what they never had to go with it until recently was the large unit actually skill that they can get for 15% reduced physical damage at max level, okay? So they now have that, which is fantastic. This is great. They will, of course, continue to take bonus damage from things like Bow Knights and Axe Throwers, but having this 15% physical damage mitigation is going to be massively amazing for their tankiness against all other physical units, okay? Love it. The other thing that was changed two patches ago was their scythes. Their scythes uh, were massively reworked to deal huge burst damage. They actually deal half decent burst damage in rounds one and six. And then the bleed over the next couple rounds is fairly minimal damage, uh, but it is going to be physical damage. So we'll, it will trigger against, it will trigger things like other bleeds from Agzok or uh, Yusra, right? Some of these guys that have the laceration debuff bleed ability. This will actually help trigger that, so it's a nice it's a nice change overall uh, for the burstiness. Okay, so that has happened. In addition to that, in the most recent balancing patch, because of the overpoweredness of the gigantic hammer, and let's be honest, guys, I'm an evil player. I play evil all day long on all three of my accounts. Okay, but the gigantic hammer with the run chariots was ridiculous. Okay, I can't. This you could be wearing no other gear. Uh, other than the gigantic hammer running war chariots and you'd basically have a win um so the devs did address that they dropped the command for the war chariots down from 20 down to four um, and that's had some unexpected side effects which are actually pretty beneficial which we'll talk about in about five seconds okay so do i agree taking it down to four command uh four unit per command not necessarily. I would have been happy to see the War Chariots at maybe 6 or 8 command. Um, that way they kind of differentiate themselves from some of the other large units because they are a unique tier 4 class. I would have loved to see maybe 8 units per command that would have that would have fixed the Gigantic Hammer overpoweredness, still left them as solid, you know, half-decent damage dealers for a tier 4 unit, uh, and let them keep some tankiness, okay? However... Reducing their command down to four has had an effect on their survivability. Having a massively enhanced health pool is really, really nice, okay? In addition to that, they don't gain as much benefit from plus three attack or plus one attack or whatever on equipment, but they now get a much higher benefit from the plus percent damage stats, okay? Um, which is great. So, <sighs> I guess their damage per command stays about the same with with the percent damage. I, I misspoke. Per unit, it increases higher uh, relative, but per command, it's the same. Um, but they do get less benefit from the plus attack, which is the nerf, right? That was the balancing. That was the nerf. Gigantic Camera gave plus 96 attack. If you multiply that by 20 units per command, that's you know, almost 2,000 plus damage from that hammer. So basically, the health pool has made these units much, much tankier, much harder to kill. This higher health pool combined with the large unit bonus have made these units dramatically tankier. And we're going to take a look at how that played out today, right? So in this build, I'll spend 10 seconds on the build, then we're going to go right into the two reports, all right? First, we have the Eastling Spear plus two attack, 4.5% damage bonus to my mounted. Then we have Scale Mail for plus 8 defense and another 3% mitigation. 
We have the Hunter's Discord, uh, Hunter's Guide helmet with Discord. I just happen to like Madness. I would prefer to have anti-stun, but I don't have an anti-stun account, uh, uh, an anti-stun helmet on this account. And then we have the worn out smoking pipe for some healing, okay? Skill wise, we've got Horn of Harad, we've got Haven, I have a few leftover points in high alert, and then I've maxed out the R3 tree for Haradrim, Tribal Tactics, and Evil Alliance, all right? For the army build, I have 56 war chariots, this is 14 command of war chariots. I have 700 Dragoons. Again, this is 14 command of Dragoons, so you're gonna really get to see apples to apples. Uh, the survivability, and the amount of damage output that dr the Dragoons do compared to the Chariots. Okay, I really wanted to make that distinction. You're going to see Command versus Command. Okay, Evil Men, Cavalry, Tier 3 Dragoons versus Evil Men, Chariots, Large Units, Tier 4. All right? And then Halberdiers, they're just, they're, they're the best, okay? The Gandalf I'm fighting against, so my Black Serpent is level 43. The Gandalf we're fighting against is level 48, okay? He is going to be running a primarily axe thrower build, which is going to actually ironically be anti-chariots because the axe throwers get plus 50% damage to my war chariots, okay? Um, the build he's running is actually anti-witch king. He is going for the anti-witch king build because he is rocking his respect 5 tree with high alert and Champion of Light. He is hoping to intercept and kill my Witch King full of uruk Alchemists. However, he got the fun... I don't know, the, the good... He got the, the, the luck of the draw to fight against my Black Serpent instead. Okay, now, into the report itself. Let's take a look. All right. Okay, so, this is interesting. So, just check out the survivability. This is a great comparison here. Um, Damage-wise, we have, let's pull out the calculator here, very nice. All right, so damage, I'm just going to compare the chariots against the dragoons, okay, because that's all we care about right now. Uh, 26661 divided by 17605, okay, so the war chariots have done 51.4%, 51.4% higher damage than the dragoons. Let me say that again. The War Chariots, with their new Scythe bonus, which is pretty substantial, by the way, they deal decent damage with the Scythe now, with their burst, they have put out 51.4% higher damage than the Dragoons. Okay? Dragoons are not huge damage dealers. They are not. They are kind of right in the middle as far as actual cavalry damage stats, right? Um, 32 to 38 right they're nothing crazy they're they're a few damage higher than you know ram riders but a few damage lower than fallen right or whatever so not not uh oops interesting to see the war chariots out damage them by that much survivability wise the war chariots have two command down um versus the dragoons we have uh 51 oops So 2.5 command down from the Dragoons, 2.58, okay. Um, okay. All right, 14.5. Oops. All right, 2.5. I'm just figuring out the top probability. So it's basically taken 6,200 damage to kill uh, per, per dead command of Dragoons, whereas the, uh, let's see here, 1405 divided by 2, it's taken 7,000 damage to kill the command of the War Chariots because of their higher HP, okay, and overall tankiness. So let's see here, divided by, what was the 6,254? Oops. Equals. Okay, so the chariots are about 13% tankier based on health pool, right? Because this damage already factors in the damage mitigation that they have. But even beyond that, this is just a pure comparison of the health pool. So their health pool has given them about 12.8. Let's call it 12.8% increase survivability based on the higher health pool. It's just harder to kill the units. You need more damage to actually kill the unit before the units receive some healing from the Black Serpent, okay? 
Really key to note that. All right. So really nice to see that that work out. Okay, so damage 50% higher, toughness 13% higher. I'm just rounding at this point. Let's see what the report actually looks like. I want to see what their burst is here in round one, okay? Let's see if, what the burst looks like here in round one. So, Horn of Harad. Oh, there's my daughter in the other room screaming. I apologize. Okay, and I want you to keep in mind that I am getting minus 27.8% damage dealt from Mithrandir here for the first few rounds, plus he has White Council, which will reduce the damage that his units take, um, I believe, right? He's got White Council. Yep, another 30% reduced damage from White Council, so keep that in mind as we look at this. 30% mitigation from White Council, 28% mitigation from uh, Mithrandir. Here's the Madness Helmet really, really putting in some work. The Cavaliers resisted at first. And then they came in, let's see here, the Master Throwers. They hit the Dragoons, okay? And then they did trigger the Madness Damage and punch the Cavaliers in the face, which is great to see. Okay, uh, I want to get to the War Chariots. The War Chariots are stunned and cannot act. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. This, this, see, this is why I like an anti-stun helmet. So I'm not even going to get the damage bonus here in the first in the first round. Okay. All right. So here's the Dragoons here in round two, hitting for 2881, 2738. This is a double strike. Then we have the War Chariots here, putting in some decent burst, right? Keep it, so this is great. The Guardians have minus 14% physical damage received from their shielding that procced. They have uh, 58 reduced damage received from Gandalf's different abilities. Okay, here is the war sites hitting the master throwers. And then the auto attack. And the bleed just triggers right away. So, we're not looking at huge numbers here, right? I mean, keep in mind, Gandalf is the damage mitigation king for the first few rounds. There's really no one that can out-mitigate him. Uh, Black Serpent's a close second, just because of his sustained mitigation, but... Gandalf the Grey really mitigates the hell out of everything the first few rounds. So, um, I want to get let's get to round six. Let's see what it looks like without my damage bonus and without Gandalf the Grey's mitigations. Okay, here in round six, I should be triggering some more bleeds. All right. Okay. It's around six or is it around seven? Where is it? It's around seven. Wow, I thought it was around six, but it's around seven it triggers. So here in round seven, okay, uh, definitely less damage than I was hoping. Pretty similar to the first rounds, actually. Almost identical. That's interesting. 1344. Let's go back. Let's look at that. What is that damage based on? We're learning new things right now, guys. Okay, so I did deal a little bit higher damage early in the fight because I did have uh, plus 45 percent damage in the round okay well I mean look you get the point let's go back down to round seven what is that bleed ticking for right I don't know so it's only ticking for 229 it's really not doing a whole lot of damage as far as ticking it's dealing some good bursts when it lands for only having 14 command I think this isn't terrible. It's not amazing. They're not damage dealing, you know, DPS prime units. But I'm not super upset with their performance, considering they have no damage bonuses from Black Serpent after round four, right? They have they lose all their damage bonuses and they're basically just units flopping around in the wind at that point. So keep in mind as well, I only have the slice at level seven out of ten. I only have reap. At level 7 out of 10, so I would probably increase the size damage dramatically with these maxed out, okay? But interesting to see the overall performance. I mean, significantly outperform the Dragoons with the same number of command. Um, interesting to see that happen, okay? So I like this report. I'm not upset. And by the way, this is 14 command versus 40 command of infantry. So my 40 command of infantry, let's just let's just do a real quick Kalkaroo here. Alright. So 
229 plus 304 divided. Average of 266 per unit times four. 1066 per command average damage, okay? Then we have the halberdiers, right? 20 times 100. So the halberdiers off the bat should have way higher damage output than, uh, than the chariots. So the fact that there's 40 command The fact that there's 40 command of my halberdiers and only 14 command of the war chariots, the chariots were able to really pump it out between their reap and their scythe ability. They were definitely able to contribute to a little bit higher damage, which is great damage per command. So um, let's see here. Let's just average it per command. So we had 20, 661 divided by 14. So they dealt a total over 10 rounds of 1904 damage per command, whereas my halberdiers dealt a total of 1,010 damage per command. So the chariots did, you know, substantially higher damage, 90.4. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, but you know, more, more, almost double the damage, like 90% higher damage per command than the halberdiers. So this is interesting for me. This is interesting. I may play around with this more. I We went off on a tangent. I wasn't meaning to do all of this. I just wanted to go through the report and see how they performed. But now that I'm seeing how much better they performed than the Dragoons and the halberdiers, um, both in damage per command and survivability, I'm really thinking what I'm going to do with these guys. This is interesting for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing with these more than I expected going into this video. I'm learning new things as we cover it. <laughs> Sorry for going on the tangents. I hope you find the math interesting. Um, I need to max these guys out and really mess around with them at full potential. I need to max these guys out. I need to max these guys out significantly and find a way to give them crazy damage in round one and really beef up the bleed. I might run a full command of war chariots. I might run full war chariots. With retaliate. <laughs> I might run full war chariots with retaliate. That would be disgusting. Oh my god. I'm just thinking about this right now. Like, my brain's going a million miles an hour. Oh my goodness. These could be pretty interesting now. I'm going to mess around with this more. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you long time. Thanks for participating in my, uh, in my crazy, psychotic theory crafting. I love you all long time. Randy out.